I wanted to congratulate you on the amazing success of the start. I mean, a year later, it's still building. Yeah, well, it's been number one in the Billboard chart for the last two weeks, so uh, it's not bad to say it's been out for a year. You know, it's been great. Um, it's better, I mean, you guys, in, in, in one of the songs, you know, it's better to burn up and fade away, but, I mean, you guys aren't burning out with this record. It's a constant. No, it is a... It's great to know it could take such a long time away and then still come out and it, to get it back again. So, uh, yeah, we definitely didn't fade away. <laughs> no, nobody actually put any pressure on it at all, especially the record company. They were great about it. They didn't even come into the studio and bugs or anything. They just waited until we delivered it. And uh, there wasn't any real pressure because we wanted to make a different sort of record on the studio than we did to uh, Pyromania. So, uh, it, what it took so long was just all the accidents and all the bad luck we had. So, uh, it turned out the album we wanted to make. Yeah, because uh, what else could we do? You'd rather split up and nobody else can do anything else or uh, just get straight back into work and get through it. Uh, other than the 12 songs which are on a steer, uh, there's about another seven knocking around uh, that uh, we re-recorded really quickly at, while we were mixing a steer, uh, and we just wanted to use as B-sides and things like that. But um, there weren't anything left over from the actual Pyromania sessions the m big mistake we made is because the Pyromania tour took so long, we didn't prepare any new songs on the road. And so uh, we had to start recording, uh, writing songs from scratch again. And that took a good six, ten months. But there's a lot, uh, a real lot of material still hanging around. Um, <laughs> it's very difficult to, to actually specify one point because uh, everything is just so good. Even, you know, he's, he's great at rearranging songs and, and we let him free to feel free to contribute whatever he wishes. But one of his strong points is we tried producing ourselves for a while, which turned out okay, but we needed an Ed Master in the studio, so to speak, because we were five people throwing their opinions forward. And when you work with Matt, he has final say, and that's the way we like it. So it stops us arguing between ourselves. But he covers every base. He's really good at what he does. You guys have also, I mean, it's, it's like the Def Leppard trademark of the layered vocal sound, which I love with all the different vocals. Is that something that he brought in or you guys envisioned? No, it was always there from the first album and even, well, even the first EP we did. We always were into doing that sort of the backing vocal thing. He definitely uh, helped to do it well. <laughs> he sort of pointed a few things out. But it was always there from the start of the band that we'd have the sort of multi layered vocals and things. Uh, well, it can work both ways. For us, it works 90% of the time. It's a real good thing because it's rather than settling on just sort of performance as you're happy with yourself or what you're capable of doing, it'll drag something out of you that you'd never have dreamt of doing or probably weren't even capable of playing and, and uh, so you're constantly improving as a musician and it just opens your mind up to different ways of thinking you know, rather than getting stuck in a rut and every album still sounding the same he, he lets you go in different directions and encourages that, so it's good for the group Oh no, the only, actually we felt great because it, they were only in the same position that we were at, at some point in our career, we came in but uh, a lot of frustration that we weren't out in, out there playing live. Uh, not any bad feeling whatsoever. We just wanted to get out and play again. And uh, as I say, it was due to the accidents and things. So we just thought, we've got to get it right. We don't want to play at second best, so we'll just keep on doing it till we get it right. Oh, there were just loads of people there, with different musicians, from Loverboy and Bon Jovi ourselves and a few other people. And different combinations of people just got up and played in the club. It was really good fun. Oh, we have Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, we didn't play any uh, our own songs. Uh, well, that was one of the first songs we uh, wrote for this theory album. And that took a year to get it right because uh, we kept rewriting it because we are sort of perfectionists when it comes down to writing. We had a really strong verse and then we sort of had an average bridge and an average chorus and we said they're not strong enough so we rewrote the chorus and then said the bridge is not strong enough, and so we rewrote that, and then rewrote the verse. So th the, sh the shape of the song changed over that year period. I mean, the, the oak's still the same as Animal, but uh, we just keep reworking things and reworking things till we're totally 100% happy with them. How about Love Bites, which is a new single, which I love? I oh, well, that was a lot more spontaneous. That sort of came out in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's something we, we don't have a sort of formula. It's whatever the individual song needs. If it's not right, we'll keep working it till we get it right. But uh, sometimes we can go, uh, like the last song we wrote for the album was Sugar, which was, we wrote it in two days. And we were just, that's turned out to be the strongest in the end. And so uh, it's whatever is right for that song. We don't write to order or form or anything. It's just, no, we actually, in fact, it made it easier because we were worried about, we thought, oh, we don't know a hell of a lot of overdubs on this album. Are we ever going to be able to reproduce it? And then uh, Phil and myself just totally changed our styles of playing. And when, then we realised on a stereo, because there were so many guitar parts going off, that it actually complemented it live rather than just playing block 
heavy metal chords. So Phil be playing one theme and I play a counter melody, so it actually sounds pretty close. Like, and it's, then so it really worked out good in the end. Oh, we don't have that much time to really think about it to tell you the truth. Uh, but on this tour, what, what we did done, we've never done before, we've, um, we've been changing the set round. When a new single comes out, we we'll work into the set. So the actual songs we played at the beginning of the tour, uh, nothing like the ones we do now. So that keeps it fresh for us, and we keep changing the running order of the set. And that keeps it exciting. No, it was very easy. We t in fact, we feel really dis disappointed when we have to play at one end, but there's no, obviously no way we can do that in a round thing in these sort of outdoor shows. But um, it came around because Peter Mench our manager, Decided to, he said, well, we've done everything else wrong up to now. We spent four years making an album. Let's, let's go the old way. And so he said, why aren't we playing the round? And the reason that came up was uh, we noticed on the last tour that it's great for the kids down the front, but the kids in the garden and the nosebleeds at the back, you know, you've, you're just a speck on the horizon. And so we said, if we put it in the middle, it's virtually equal distance around. So it's much more intimate. There's four front rows. And uh, the sound's much better. And it gives everybody in the band a chance to be a front man because you can be, each guy can be on four different sides. So uh, rather than having to hide behind a singer or being very formulated, you can do what you want. So it keeps it fresh for us. It's not as though you get into sort of choreography mood or anything. You just run around anywhere you want. And it worked out really well. And we thought we'd have a lot of problems, but it turned out great. As I say, there was a few shows we had to go back to playing one end because the roof couldn't support it because it was hanging from this, the roof. And they were quite, we felt really disappointed when we had to do that. It was much more intimate as well. You know, uh, the kids which would normally be at the back are off the distance they would normally be. So it's, it's good for everybody. To me, quite honestly, it didn't stand out as a single from the very start. But we knew we, that was the album we tried to make with the stereo. We didn't want to just have two singles and then eight filler tracks or whatever. We tried to make it as deep as we could with singles. And uh, that was we knew it was going to get released. We didn't know what order the song was going to get released in. And... Uh, we reached it, got to number two, so that was great. Well, number one in some shots. But um, next thing will be Love Bites. And then who knows, we, we've still got choices after that. It could be Armageddon or A Love and Affection. That was a really, a really bad effort. I think Sav wrote the verse, Phil wrote the bridge, and I wrote the chorus. So uh, that, was, that was good because it was a different sort of song for us to do, a sort of ballad, but not being um, too smoochy. You know, it still had the drums and everything there. So that was, it felt good. The only reason we can go on tours like this is if we get along so well, and not even now while I'm doing this interview, the rest of the guys are playing soccer together. So we're all each other's best friends, and that makes it so much easier. We really get along together. Well, I'm just happy to be on the road at the moment. I can't really pinpoint anything. I just, uh, I think we did a lot of things, new things, and I think a lot of up-and-coming groups have taken that, which is a real compliment, because I think after the Pyromani album, that started something where a lot of up-and-coming groups, and they went for that sound, which was great as a compliment. And then instead of relying on that, we decided to go for Asteria, which we, we said before we wanted to make a different record. We didn't want to make Pyromania 2. And that seems to have done the trick again. So it's, uh, I think the quality to always change and not get stuck in a particular style and having the freedom to do things what we want to do and not having to be in a rut. You know. It's a combination, as I say, we, we don't do anything to form. You know. If it's an out-and-out out rock song, Phil will just nod to me or I'll nod to him and it's obviously he's going to solo. And if it's that sort of song where it merits it, we'll just steam red. And then if it's something like Love Bites, we think about it a little bit more. Because the song is, the actual guitar solo is also, also a vocal melody and such. So it's a very free, you know, we don't get stuck in any certain way of thinking. And you guys have a great guitar interplay. I mean, there's a chemistry that exists between you and Phil. Oh, without a doubt, yeah, it's great. We sort of know each other's thinking. And uh, with such different styles of playing, you know, uh, Phil was plays by ear and I was taught classically so the two together blend really good and you can always tell on record who's playing what oh yeah I wrote that on a bus <laughs> I was going I was thinking, I just joined the group I'd been with the group about two weeks in 1977 and I was just sat on a bus going to the rehearsal I didn't have a guitar or anything I just came up with this riff and da -da 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 -da. I just belted into the rehearsal room I said everybody shut up and then I just worked it out and then we that was wasted it was written in five minutes well, when we were playing virtually every night, and uh, as you can see, every every single day we sound check. A lot of groups don't bother sound checking. We just did three nights in Minneapolis about well a couple of weeks ago, and we sound check every day, even if it's right the day before. We uh, so we get a lot of playing in a day with anyway. Yeah, in in the early days of a few because we, oh, we were so supporting, and we just had to pick up a lot of things that. Uh, was going. The weirdest combination was Blackfoot and Def Leppard. That was really weird. 
No disrespect to Blackford, the, you know, De- about like Death Club and Blackford being together, that was a bit of a strange combination. Well, we're not really sure exactly what we're going to do yet. We're ro- as I said, on this album, what we're doing, which we didn't do on Pyromania, is we're writing on the road and we've already got about five new songs, which it w- weren't B-sides or anything. So they'll definitely be on it. And we're going to take a two-week break after the tour, that's all, and go straight back into the studio because we want to try and have a new album out for next April, believe it or not. <laughs> we don't want to be in the studio again for a long time. And so I suppose if we can write more songs, I said we've got five or six now, if we can write more, that will, will be the album. If, if there's something that never got used in the past, maybe we'll think about putting that on. But we're going for a totally different approach on this, this next record. In what way? I think it'll be a lot more spontaneous. As I say, uh, Hysteria definitely worked for the time it's out now, but that doesn't mean, just in the same way as Pyromania, we don't want to depend on that sound. So some of it might be slick production, but some of it might be a lot more raw than it has been from a couple of albums. Well, we don't really think of things like that. We knew that we were doing pretty well on Pyromania. When we started headlining, we start, the beginning of that tour, we were supporting Billy Squire for six weeks, and we knew things were going really well, and uh, then we said, let's try headlining. And when we saw ourselves on MTV a lot and things like that, and then we knew we sort of broke through. That was a similar sort of thing to Animal. Uh, I had the song, I think Sav wrote the, the chorus, I wrote the bridge, and we had this sort of verse that wasn't that strong. And then after about ten weeks in the studio, we said, oh, we don't want to live with it, and I just walked in, and it just came out so spontaneously. I've been trying for weeks to try and change it, and then I just got an idea, and so I came out with that idea on the spur of the moment. And the video's great for it. Yeah, that was the first video we shot for the Pyromania album. Wow. I think you can't get away from it, it's there. I think it's there to stay. I don't, I don't know how important it is. It's very difficult, because you can never tell if it's a song that's selling a record or, or the look of the video. Uh, I personally don't like making them. <laughs> it's like two days' work for three minutes or whatever. But I think they're a necess- necessity now, you know. So, uh, we wanted to drop it when we were rehearsing on this tour. Uh, we were all sick and tired of playing it the same way. And so uh, we, we went, and our manager... Uh, Cliff Burns said, well, you can't, because to a lot of kids, that's the song that sort of broke you off the Siri album. Sorry, uh, Iron Dry album. So he said, well, if we, can't, we don't want to play it the way it is on the record. Let's just rethink it. So we decided to do it as an acoustic song, and then go to the solo section onwards as electric. And that worked really well. It's really exciting to play again now. It's almost like it's a brand new song again. Yeah, I write art break. I write the music for it. <laughs> it's very hard to talk about your own music sometimes. It, it was a different feel of song off the Iron Dry album to the others anyway. Maybe that had something to do with it. No, we, we're just ourselves, we always have been, and uh, I think it's just an honesty thing. We don't try to be anything we're not. We walk around in shorts and don't let whatever, you know. It's just, that's just the way we are, what you see is what you get sort of thing, you know. Uh, I love playing live the most, and also creating the songs is good. Uh, sometimes... I don't mind being in the studio if it's a short period of time, but four years of taking it a little bit far. <laughs> so you sort of go a bit crazy. But uh, the reason we formed Def Lab was to be a good live group and to make records, but always to be a live group. We never wanted just to release records and not to tour. We always enjoy being on tour the most. Well, it seems to be that way at the moment. Uh, it's a cross-section between girls and boys, which is great to have. But you see... Uh, Especially since the Sugar video, there's been a lot of younger people coming. But there's also the hardcore fans that were there on the Pyromania tour, so, you know, they're a little bit older now. So it's hard to say, I, I don't really know. It's just great, but that's what we wanted to do with the, the Assistri- Asteria album. As I say, we wanted to keep the hardcore fans, but also appeal to other groups of people that might not really be into heavy rock, you know? Yeah, we got paid five pounds, which is about, uh, I don't know, then it must have been about... Eight dollars, <laughs> eight ten dollars, and he was in a school, and uh, it was a school lender term party, you know, and uh, there was no alcohol. And I remember we smuggled all the beer in, in the bass drum, <laughs> and uh, that was the first time we appeared as Def Leppard at Westfield School in Sheffield. Good night. From what I remember, yeah, <laughs> I think I threatened to leave the group if we didn't do a, a gig, so I think we said, yeah, let's find something to play. What's the most memorable concert you ever went to? Somebody else's concert. Uh, I went to see Led Zeppelin at Nebworth in 1979. That was, uh, they were my favourite group anyway, so that was pretty wild to see them. That's the only time I ever got to see them as well. Uh, I met Robert Plan uh, a couple of times. Band of the band? Uh, yeah, in fact, he was playing at the same place we played last night, the night before, so uh, yeah, he's a real cool guy. <laughs> 
You're only as good as your last record. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't uh, never take anything for granted, and always keep your your feet on the ground because uh, we thought everything was going so smooth after Pyromania, and then we didn't know what fate had around the corner. And so uh, you just have to be sort of humble and take it for what it is. Don't expect anything, and then don't let your head get larger than life. And then so you get a second chance sometimes that way. Um, <laughs> what you guys were. Uh, a damn good rock and roll group with a lot of melody, and uh, they run around like nutters on stage. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of energy on stage, and we always treat the live performance different to a record. It's a lot tougher. It sounds like it's still a thrill for you. And oh yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely exciting to be around and see all those people out there every night. The atmosphere is amazing. Yeah. That wasn't the most. Uh, that was the most memorable because it was so uh, so great just to get uh, all the problems out of the way. But the, uh, the, the best one was to play in the round and get back in the States and realise that people were into it again. Because we really didn't know what to expect after four years away.